This morning it is an honor and a privilege to represent to you a good friend of mine, John the Baptist. John the Baptist has come on the scene once again and does make his mark continually on his people. I want to share this morning from Matthew chapter 3, the first 12 verses. Matthew chapter 3, the first 12 verses, and they're found on page 2 in the New Testament. If you'd like to follow along. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, claiming, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Then the, then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me, friends. Oh God, on this wonderful day, we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord God, for the blessings you have sent our way. We thank you, Lord, this morning for the blessing of your prophet, John the Baptist. God, as we move into this scripture now for a few moments, may you take this scripture and encourage us, challenge us, and move us forward in our walk of faith. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Truthfully, friends, John the Baptist could be called a rabble rouser. He was curt with his words. He was tough with his time. He met people along the way that needed a lot of help. John, like David prayed a few moments ago, was the guy that came and said, prepare your lives because there's a Savior coming into the world that's going to be Christ the Lord. Prepare yourselves for this coming, this great coming. So every year we welcome John the Baptist to us. Every year we listen. I listen for instruction from John the Baptist every year and what it is that God would have me to say to the congregation and what it is that God would have put upon my heart. So this is what I heard this week. This is the lesson that I heard this week from John the Baptist. I heard a person full of passion. I heard a person full of proclamation. I heard a person with a voice full of judgment. John the Baptist came and spread a word that was not a very popular word. At the beginning, John the Baptist preached a word of judgment. Often as preachers, we don't have much trouble with that. We can talk about, we can holler and shout, repent for the kingdom is at hand. John did just that. So maybe it is this season that we need a little bit of fire and brimstone. Maybe we need just a little bit of that. Because at this season when we begin to welcome in the Christ child once again, we can quickly become confused. We can quickly become skewed one way or skewed this way. Or we usurp this or usurp that and we push what's not good for us. We shop. Let's face it, we shop. We get piles of presents because truthfully we want those presents to help encourage that we love somebody. It's the season to be jolly, especially if you're part of a credit card company 
It's really a season to be jolly. The thing about John the Baptist is this. John the Baptist points to the difference between our talk and our behavior. Repentance is more than just saying the word. Repentance is living out the word in action. I mean, this guy called people a bunch of snakes. He did. He called them a brood of vipers. He begged them. His word was begging the people to bear fruit, not just talk about being saved. Don't just talk about knowing Christ. Don't just, but be, put your words into action. Bear fruit worthy of repentance. There's a story I read this week from Sue Kidd in a book, her book, All Things Are Possible, and she writes this story. During the night, some dogs were barking, and they were barking close to a local neighbor's home. They're a local couple. They were really mad. So the couple thought, well, it's maybe it could be an intruder. You know, if your dogs bark outside, right? I mean, if my dogs bark then I think maybe something's going on, right? So they waited till the next morning, and actually he had not been an intruder. This man had come back to her home, their home and had brought back something he'd stolen about six weeks earlier. He actually brought back two car speakers that he had lifted from their garage, placed them on their porch, and said, I am sorry that I did this. God has forgiven me. I've asked for repentance. God has forgiven me. So I want to bring these speakers back to you to prove to you what I'm a different person. I've been changed. God has rectified this situation for me. I no longer live that way. That, my friends, is putting behavior into action. It's different than just talking about a word. It's different than just saying, you know, we can, uh, we can all the time, I can say, well, uh, I repent. Well, I'm sorry. But unless I go up to that person that I've criticized, and unless I say, I'm sorry that I've done that, then I really have not put my words into action. Unless I go up and share a good word with someone else. A good word about Christ. Then I've really not heard the message that John the Baptist wanted us to hear. John the Baptist wanted us to understand that this message that Jesus was coming and bringing was a message that changes lives. It changes our lives for the better. I thought about it this week. If I were going to give out a Christmas card about John the Baptist, what would it look like? So, I made up a little bit of cards. John the Baptist card would have a grasshopper on it. They say they're nutritional. I don't want to find out. <laughs> Maybe some of you beat them. I don't know. He'd probably have a grasshopper on his front of his Christmas card. And then John the Baptist would probably walk up with his Christmas card and he would have his leather belt around his waist. John the Baptist had that leather camel hair belt around his waist. Do you know how much camel hair belts cost now? They're very expensive. John the Baptist would probably be talking about a word called repentance. Friends, do you know this? That every time someone was getting ready to teach, when Jesus was getting ready to teach, his very first sermon, he said, use that word, repent, for the kingdom of God is near. Do you remember the story about the Apostle Peter on the day of Pentecost? Remember that? 
When the people said, okay, Peter, now what should we do? We've heard, now what do we do? We've seen, we've seen all this great action from God. We've seen all this great spirit that's moving among us. Now what do we do? And what did Peter say? Repent and be baptized, every one of you. When Jesus was, met his disciples at the day of resurrection, he used that word. You see, friends, repentance is action. Repentance is not just a behavior. Repentance is action. John yields that word this morning over and over and over again. And he yields it not just for me, but he yields it for you too. For all of us. We should be a confessing people. I need to be a more confessing person. Every day I need to say to God, you know, I've done some things wrong. I haven't handled a certain situation right. I really need God. I really need to confess to you. I really need to pour my heart out again to Jesus today because I have not been exactly right the way I should have been. My wife knows that better than anybody. She lives with me. So what else would John the Baptist, what would his Christmas card have on it? I want to share something else with you. This very, had been very enlightening to me and trust, hopefully to be very enlightening to you as we wade through the scripture. I'm going to read verse 11 again. If you've got it in front of you, read it again. I'm going to read it. John did not just come and holler repentance. I've not just come to the church to do that. Listen to verse 11. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worried to carry, worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. John didn't just come to talk about repentance. John, look at this. This Christmas card, this is what it would have on it right here. John pointed people in the right direction. John the Baptist points us to the right direction. You may, everything I do, maybe, or have done in the last six years, you might, you might say, well, I don't really agree with that. But there's one thing you cannot say about me. I have always pointed you to Jesus. That's always been my goal. That's always been on my heart. That's always been what God has called me to do. I'm going to point you like John the Baptist. I'm going to point you to Jesus because I believe that that is the message, the old, old message that we need to continue to hear day after day after day. And when that sinks down and dies inside of us and changes our lives and we understand what true forgiveness and true repentance is all about, we have better lives, we have better opportunities, we have a grand situation in our lives. John the Baptist, what a messenger. What a prophet. Let us follow suit if you don't do anything else today tomorrow the rest of your life remember that we point we point people to the Lord everything we do here should be about that it should be about pointing people to Christ and when that happens the world changes it really does it changes for the better Let's pray. Well, God, your word is upon us this day. Your spirit has led and guided us today. And God, we're thankful for that. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have had over the years and those that we will continue to have in this community and, in, and throughout this church and throughout the world we are called people we are sent people our work is not just about talking a good game our work is not just about showing our good works on a job application or a resume but our works is our work is living that proclamation our work is about moving forward and living into that way that you call life eternal this morning Lord my heart is heavy 
is we've lost a good friend of ours, Mr. Dan Rayner. Well, before he was ours, he was yours. I think about him this morning. And not a large man, but what a large heart he did have. Not a man that would talk that awful much, but a man that lived every word of the message of Jesus Christ. So I pray today, Lord, that you would bring solace to our church. I pray, God, today that you would help us to continue to reach out and to remember the words of the old, old hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. Be with us now, God, as we continue to prepare our way, to prepare our way to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into our hearts, in whose name we pray. Amen.